Hello, Americans. <laughs> Here I am again. <laughs> We make a translation, you know, German to English. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about the advertising claim of a Beamer competitor. Let me make a personal statement right up front. We uh, always refer to a very high good of democracy, freedom of opinion. So people have the right to speak their opinion, even if his or her opinion is not competent. So we have the freedom of opinion. This is a very, very high good, a very important right. But what's often forgotten is that it is related and connected with the duty to act reasonably and to act fairly and properly. And that's the problem. We saw it yesterday. And that's why I would like to ask you, even if it's boring, I would like to show you a few results from a quality management study. I'd like to present those to you today. A study that includes Beamer competitors. It took us two years. Two years. And it really was a lot of effort. And the Ethics Commission in Germany I had to swear to them, no company will support me financially when I do this. I will do everything from the financial means of my own institute. Everything, no matter what the cost will be. I just want to know where do we stand. And I want to know it in a competent way. So that's why I worked with leading um, hospitals and universities in Germany. I asked them, would you do a completely blind and anonymous study without my own input? Would you take a look at the technical parameters of these products? So this is uh, quality management faculties in Germany and for measurement technology. So those university uh, faculties I approached and I said, can you do it? Because I wanted to know. Then I talked to head physicians of large hospitals in Germany and I asked them, are you in? Can, can we uh, examine um, larger populations of your hospital? And I worked with the Ethics Commission. It was a long process. It was very intense. I'll make it short today and I'll just say, the following thing is very important for me. I did not, uh, I was not involved myself. I paid for it blindly and I provided the measuring tools, the instruments that were needed, but I did not have any input in these analyses, in these studies. This was all my colleagues and I swear this to you. I hold my hand up and I swear. I just wanted to know where do we stand. So I didn't have any personal input in the actual examination. About 15 years ago, I published the results of a study of a competitor. And back then, the differences were large in these clinical studies. And so now I wanted to know what's the situation today. So here's the, vi uh, here, here's the video. So roll. Then please be patient. I don't have any jokes here to entertain you with. Even I am out of jokes. It's very dry. I apologize. Not even a joke from me, but please try to stand it. Try to handle it. Let's take a look at the technical analysis and just the most important ones. I'll explain it, even if this is all written in the German, original German language. So the first testing result is the coil distribution, which you see on the top right and on the bottom in blue. You see um, voltage and yellow, the flux density in these time units. This is only a short um, excerpt. And what you have to know is that every tested object has produced a whole pile of paperwork. We tr really try to do this in every direction and with every resolution to look at these signals. So this is tested device number one, and this uh, remained from a kind of funnel. Only four devices were left over at the end that were even worth examining further. 
all the other devices were based on the opinion of their university's quality management experts were considered that they're not even worth examining because they had such major technical problems. <coughs> so here you see voltage and frequency. So what do you see there? And just like 15 years ago, I know this product from 15 years ago, and what can I say? They caught up a little bit. So look at this. They're already in a certain area down there, on the bottom there, with the frequencies. In the lower frequency area, they're coming closer to us. So we examine it a little more closely. <coughs> so this is just a rough outline of the technical data from these devices. And what we, we know everything about these devices. Believe me, we're going to publish it, but I cannot share this today because I'd need all day to do so. So just a selection here. So here is the tested device number two, the Beamer. So those are our signals and our coil distribution, just for you as a, as a control group, because this was anonymous. I knew what the signals would look like, but all these examiners at the Technical University had no idea, of course. So then I also wanted to test, are they doing the exact same thing at Beamer? Is the Beamer working just like we developed it scientifically? So this was a test for me. Does the Beamer do what I developed? And yes, the Beamers do that. Those are our signals. So you see the distribution of the voltages and of the magnetic flux density over time. And in a second curve, you'll see how this was distributed across frequencies. So those are very complicated vibrations here. You can see it again in the different frequency areas. And just for you to, to see, so tested object one before that was a little bit closer now in the lower frequencies. Yes, they caught up. They, they have not infringed uh, the Beamer patent yet, but they can't go on much further. So that's the Beamer. So we have tons of technical data on this. Uh, I just really wanted to know across space and time how these fields are distributed across space. All that stuff was important to me. I'm showing this to you, and you might be bored, I know that. But I want you to see how thoroughly we approach this whole issue. I'm not going to stand here and present things that aren't um, that aren't sophisticated, that aren't done complete. So here, IMRS, tested object number three. On the upper right, you see the coil distribution. Yeah, you can do it like that. And then you see again the distribution of voltage and flux density. And on the next illustration, seen across frequencies, you'll notice something. Something ah, that struck my eye right away. They are very close to the Beamer patent. They have learned something. This is no longer the same device it was 15 years ago. And that was amazing, uh, actually astounding, because normally you don't find out something like that. You have to actually do a very, very thorough study. Look at the distribution in the lower frequency area. They are very close to us at this point. Well, uh, let's take, uh, let's look at look and see. I think we know more about these different tested devices than the manufacturers themselves. We put a lot of effort into this, yeah. I just wanted to know. What are they doing? Not in order to discuss it um, to death. No. I wanted to know, uh, can we learn something from this if they're doing something well, for example? And I said, no, we can't learn anything from them. But. So now, take a look at the fourth tested device. This, the coils are arranged in a very unusual way. I mean, you can do it that way, but what strikes the eye right away, there's different periodicities. Um, so all they're trying to do is follow a Beamer, the Beamer model. I just have to say it like that. They're trying to copy us a little bit. 
I mean, what's it worth? The clinical studies will show us. And just a small selection, a really tiny selection, is what you're going to see now. I don't want to go over my time. So take a look at this for now. It looks different. We took a very close look at it. And um, we are absolutely reliable in this case. No one can outdo us here when it comes to the accuracy of these measurements. And all of them are not done by me. I'll have to emphasize that again. They were not done by me. They were done by competent experts in a blind study. And they've presented on this, too. That is astounding. Look at this here in the frequency distribution. Wieder zu den niedrigen Frequenzen. So look at the frequency distribution again, the lower frequencies. I mean, by now you all got. Mal sehen, was das in den klinischen Bewertungen wert ist. Merken Sie etwas? You see? Notice something? Das ist ja auch ein Produkt A versus Produkt B. This is also Product A versus Product B and so on. Ich gehe anders ran. I approach it differently. Compare that to what you saw in the video yesterday. So the first clinical study. This is a case study, just a case study. Here's a test subject, and this is the control group. Just one example. The beginning there, start, and then they had a little bit of a physical strain, and then we looked how they reacted. And the dark curve on the top, that is the flow in the micro vessels and I don't even want to get into Ach, the other parameters. Den, Just look at the ja, top line. In der Phase and in that, der in, the, in the regeneration der phase, der after a physical so strain, tritt eine des you have an increased flow for regeneration. So, sehen, wie sich an so take a look at an individual äh, example. Erläutert, die anderen Produkte verhalten. Let's see how the other products, uh, products act here, what the other products do. This is the control group, a placebo. This was a placebo. So let's take a look at the devices. This is a test subject number one. And look at this flow. It's actually going down a little bit. But then, in the regeneration phase, there's really something going on there. But then look at the other parameters there, and then you'll say to yourself, well, it, we didn't really help this patient very much. So then let's keep looking here. I look forward to test device number two. Of course, these are selected examples, but they are representative. Afterwards, I'll give you the complete, show you the complete data from, an, uh, from a, a study. So this is the test device number two. What do you notice? In the strain phase, the stimulation is already active, and then the regeneration is boosting that even further. So in other words, we gave a physical strain here, but we helped to overcome that and to uh, perform better. So this is the test device number two. Be patient. I want to give you an idea of how accurately we are doing this. And we're going to publish it soon. So those are huge mountains of data, which I'm really summarizing very briefly, but you must trust me that I'm not pretending or faking it here for you. So this is number four, test device number four. Look at that. In the strain phase, that's the center part of the image. We didn't help the patient at all. But in the regeneration phase, he gets a push, he gets a stimulation. Yeah. Na ja, gut. So well. Ja. Wir erinnern sich. Remember, das hier ist IMRS. This is IMRS. Ja. So sieht das aus und alle anderen. That's what it looks like in all the other features here. Uh, are um, uh, behave in a, in a in similar way. But at least in the regeneration phase, after some exercise, the patient gehabt. does have an effect Jetzt or did, did show an effect. Testgerät so let's look at the fourth device. Test it. And this one is nothing. You might as well not have used it at all. So the outcome in the totality of a clinical study, you show very small, you're seeing very changes. And these are just case studies, small examples. I just wanted to show you how did we proceed, what was our method. We used the best testing um, instruments that are available worldwide. 
we did so not want anybody to be able to attack us. Two out of three so here's a complete clinical study of inpatient and outpatient, uh, inpatient, outpatient patients over 30 days for all four tested devices. So take a look at that. And this is where the bomb hits. This is the oxygen on the venol side. How much oxygen, how much less or more oxygen was delivered compared to the zero base value, initial value? So how much more oxygen? Test device number two with a big difference ahead of the pack. Then device number three, well, at least something. The IMRS did, did do quite okay. I'll have to recognize that. They did improve their product and they have an okay effect. The others are around five or less percent, and I'm not going to discuss them right now. So, tested device number two is the Beamer. That is today's state. So if you still have doubts, I'll show you the complete findings which will be published for the red blood cell flow in the microvascular networks. And there are no doubts about these results. The, this is no fake news. This is clinical data that is absolutely credible. I uh, left this picture up here for a little while so that you can really remember it, because this will go around the world in very shortly. And I believe that this would have been quite good for IMRS if they had presented these effects, then I wouldn't have had anything to criticize them for. Second place in a competition is still a good performance, and I will recognize that. But they tried a different approach, as you've seen yesterday. So this is the blood, red blood cell flow, the change in percent over a 30-day period. And this is even more clear. So that's the difference, and this is the truth. Beamer versus others. And there's no way around that. When I'm a quiz, was an anderen Gang einlegt, dann gebe ich ab. So I really summarized it very briefly. Those are mountains of um, folders and data. I just really, really didn't want to burden you today. I just wanted to show you the result. And if someone comes up to you and questions it, then uh, say to them, okay, do it yourself. Provide your own measured data. And if you can't do that, shut up. Friends, in spite of that, I would like to say that I respect our competitor. I recognize that in comparison to the measuring data that we've done 15 years ago, you have done a good job and improved your product. And at IMRS, it has, it has been a greater jump than with other products. I agree to that. But the champion, dear friends, Beamer will remain the champion. And now I will promise something to you. You know, I hear from other competitors that they want to catch up with Beamer. You, you can do that. I wish you the best from all of my heart. But if that should be the case without you infringing on the patents that Beamer has, hmm, I don't know how you're going to do that. You'd have to research. You have to really do the, the extensive re uh, research. But if that is the case, I promise you we will meet. We, you will not catch up with us because we've been 
and I've been working on making our competitive edge larger. We will continue to work on this beamer. Friends, that's the part that I have given you in summary. It was a bit boring, I know. Well, you know, those are research protocols and research documents, and research documents are similar to the documents from the IRS. It's, uh, it's just a pain to look through those, but that's what you have to do.